Good morning. My name is Stephanie Shine of Tennessee Shakespeare Company. Welcome back to the Decameron Project. The date, April 7th, 2020. Today's theme, freedom. On this date in history, William Davenant died in 1668. Who was William Davenant? He was a poet, a playwright, a soldier, and he was William Shakespeare's godson. I spend a lot of time with Shakespeare's immortal self in his words, but how wonderful to have one more little piece of information about his life, about his corporal life. It makes me feel closer to him. William Shakespeare used to stop at William Davenant's parents' inn, the Crown Inn in Oxford, as he traveled from London to Stratford-upon-Avon. And he was friends with William's parents. So when William was born, he was named Godfather. Isn't that kind of lovely? When William Shakespeare died, William Davenant wrote a poem two years after. Uh, he said he wrote this at the age of 12. Let's hear what he had to say. This is in remembrance of Master Shakespeare. Beware, delighted poets, when you sing, to welcome nature in the early spring. Your numerous feet not, dare not tread the banks of Avon, for each flower, as it ne'er new sun or shower, hangs there the pensive head. Each tree whose thick and spreading growth hath made rather a night between the boughs than shade, unwilling now to grow, looks like the plume or captive wears, whose rifled falls are steeped in the tears which from his last rage flow. The piteous river wept itself away, long since, alas, to such swift decay, that reach the map and look if you a river there can spy, and for a river your mocked eye will find a shallow brook. William Davenant goes to London and he's welcomed at court. He becomes a darling of the court. Uh, this would be the court of Charles I and his French queen, Henrietta Maria. And she was a great patron of the arts, which was wonderful for William. William is named Poet Laureate upon the death of Ben Jonson, one of Shakespeare's great rivals and great friends and that would be in 1638. The Civil War breaks out and all the theaters are shut down for 18 long years. After Oliver Cromwell wins and all of his Puritans put a law into effect, of course the theater is dangerous. It's very dangerous to put people together and let them hear truths so there can be no serious drama. But William Davenant finds a way around this and in 1656 he receives permission to present what he calls operas. They're not the operas that we think of today. But the word opera is entered into the English language at this time by his use. And in this opera, he actually presents one of his own plays. And within it, the first professional female actress in England takes the stage. Her name was Mrs. Coleman. Six years later, when, excuse me, four years later, when the theaters are opened again in 1660, this is when Charles II resumes the throne again and the theaters are opened. It is Davenant and his friend Thomas Killigrew who receive patents to perform serious drama. And Shakespeare takes the stage again. In December of 1660, Othello is produced. And here we have, for the very first time, a woman in England, a professional female actress speaking the words of Desdemona. It is such a curiosity that prologues need to be written to introduce it. I think you'll enjoy this one. This was penned by Thomas Jordan. I come unknown to any of the rest. To tell the news, I saw the lady dressed. The woman plays today, mistake me not. No man in gown or page in petticoat. And some of the inconveniences of having men actresses were amusingly glanced at in this. Our women are defective and so sized, you'd think they were some of the guard disguised. For to speak truth, men act that are between 40 and 50, wenches of 15, with bones so large and nerves so incompliant, when you call Desdemona, enter giant. Can you imagine what it must have been like to be in the audience for the first time hearing a woman speak these words? Alas, Iago, what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him. For by this light of heaven, I know not how I lost him. 
If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any part, delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet, and ever did, and ever will love him dearly, comfort forswear me. Unkindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never taint my love. Regarding Sir William Davenant's legacy, those in the literary sect might not appreciate him very much, and in fact, this following appeared in an article represented from a dictionary of the drama, William Davenport Adams, Philadelphia, J.P. Lippincott Company, 1904. The personal character, adventures, and fame of Davenant, and more especially his position as a leading reformer, or rather debaser of the stage, have always given him a prominence in the history of literature which his writings hardly justify. His plays are utterly unreadable, his poems are usually stilted and unnatural, his influence on English drama must be condemned as wholly deplorable. I disagree. This man brought freedom to women. He produced the first professional production of a play that let women be on the stage in England. I thank him for giving me artistic freedom so many years later so that I could enjoy a career on the stage. Thank you, Sir William Davenant. And thank you all for joining me here today. And let's all enjoy the freedoms we have in this interesting time of confinement. Goodbye. <laughs>